Hey everyone, it's Phil here from Hookturn and I'd like to take a few minutes to touch on some of the features and changes that you can expect to see in version 1.1 of the ACF Custom Database Tables plugin. Using a few simple filters, you'll now be able to control the data types of your table columns. So to enable this, we basically have to activate a, a module that we've added to the plugin, and then we just need to hook into some filters that are being exposed by that module. Uh, now in the handler here, you can see that we're checking for a table named agents and within that table we're looking for two columns one named name and one named website and we're changing their types to varchar and then down here we're looking for a table name of properties and we're changing the column name to number of bedrooms so now that i've activated those if i come over and run our table update process all right you'll see that we get these change type notification up here so it's change type from long text to varchar and here it's got change type uh, from long text to int. Now if I come over to our table and reload our tables, you'll see number of bedrooms is now an integer. And if we look at agents, uh, name and website are now varchars. Now this kind of uh, functionality opens up new possibilities when writing your own SQL queries, and it can improve both storage efficiency and searchability of your custom tables. We've had a few reports in the past of people having issues on Redis that we were previously unable to reproduce in our testing environments. I'm happy to report, however, that we've managed to debug and adjust our code to better support Redis back systems. We've also added a few filters for running custom actions after changes are made to the database schema. The filters run after each table is updated, making it possible for you to run custom code specific to a table. The filters also provide the opportunity for you to add custom output messages to the admin notification. Now to work with this feature, we basically need to enable the module which exposes some necessary filters, and then we basically attach a handler to the, one of those filters, um, and we'll take a look at that filter now. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to look at for a table named agents, and what this is basically saying here is we're going to create an index on the name column, Okay, and, uh, and if that is successfully created, we're going to uh, let the user know by added, adding a created index, etc, etc, notification. So now that that's activated, we'll head on over to our uh, table update process page. Well, just, well, our manage tables. We'll head on over to our manage tables screen. Okay, and I'm just going to run the process here. And you'll see here in the output that we've got created index name on table WP agents. And if we look at our um, table schema here and reload, we'll get an additional index down here called name. So this new functionality will allow you to run any code you like as part of the table update process. So you can easily create table indexes. You could run alter statements on the updated table schema, or you could even do something like run custom logging or notification systems. I am happy to announce that we'll now have support for ACF's repeater field. Now by default, repeater field data is stored as an encoded array in a single column, but by implementing a simple filter, you can choose to configure your repeater fields to create their own database tables. When using separate tables, each row of a repeater will be a row in your table, and each supported field within that repeater will be a column within that table row. So let's take a look here. So I've got a field group called agent fields and we've got two repeaters here. One's called locations, one is called people. Now at the moment, the definition basically has a single table and, that's, um, and uh, that table has a column for each locations and people. So at this stage, all the data would just be encoded um, inside those two columns. So what I'm gonna do though is head over to my editor and I'm going to enable a function here that hooks in and says on the table, well, on the agents table, when a field is named locations, create subtable. Okay, so we'll come back over here. I'll update my field group again. And what we're now going to see is uh, we have this added little property here called subtables. And you'll see locations has been removed from our columns. And we now have a, an additional table here called agents locations. Okay, so I'm going to go to manage database tables. I'm going to run the table update process. Okay, and we see that we now have three tables here so we have agents agents locations and properties okay and uh, if we come over to our database we'll see that those tables are here as we're expecting them to be and let's go and have a look at creating an agent so that you can see the data in there okay all right so i'm going to save this now 
publish this. All right, now if I come over and look at our database on our agents table, so I'll reload this, you'll see that our people field has all our um, data from the people uh, repeater in an encoded JSON array, right? So um, if we look at our agents locations table, however, we get our repeater rows or our, our, our repeater entries appearing as separate um, table rows. It's a very exciting feature is you'll now be able to write uh, custom SQL queries targeting your repeater data and you'll also be able to easily visualize your repeater data using your favorite database client. Um, just a quick note on nested repeaters. So at this stage nested repeaters, that is repeaters inside other repeaters, they'll just be encoded data within a single table field. Okay so that's all I have to show you today. Uh, we are currently working through our beta testing phase which will like likely take a few more weeks. Um, stay tuned for the official release. Um, you can either join our mailing list via our website or you can follow us on Twitter at hookturn underscore io. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at hookturn.io.